On today's show, Hyundai teases its next-gen hydrogen-powered SUV. Sergio Marchion predicts that EV prices are going to soar. And Honda intros a diesel with eye-popping fuel economy. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, dedicated to promoting the innovation and creativity developed by the global automotive industry. Well, Hyundai is giving us a sneak peek of its next-gen fuel cell SUV, which launches next year. Thanks to enhanced efficiency, it's targeting a driving range of 580 kilometers, or about 360 miles, based on Korean test procedures. It can start at negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit. In addition to the new SUV, Hyundai says it's boosting R&D efforts to make its fuel cell system smaller and cheaper so it can be equipped in smaller sedans. Hyundai is also going to introduce a hydrogen-powered bus at the end of the year as well. The new fuel cell SUV will be officially unveiled at CES in January. It will be sold in South Korea, the U.S. and Europe, and possibly China. In late 2012, we caught up with the folks from Carbon Revolution, an Australian company that had just made a big splash at SEMA with the introduction of their one-piece carbon fiber wheels. At the time, the wheels were almost exclusively designed for the Porsche 911, and now the automaker is bringing that work in-house. While the wheel centers are made from over 200 sheets of carbon fiber fabric, the rest is woven together using a new braiding technique for wheels. Porsche says it's the first in the world to use this technology, which requires a braiding machine that's nine meters or nearly 30 feet wide. And even though each wheel is made from over 11 miles of carbon fiber, they're 20% lighter and 20% stronger than standard alloy wheels. The braided carbon fiber wheels will first be available as an option for the Porsche 911 Turbo S Exclusive Series with the exclusive price of 15,000 euros, which is a little over $17,500. Coming up next, Sergio predicts the cost of EVs is going to soar. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results and by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. Last week, we wondered if BMW had jumped the shark. It's losing sales and market share. Critics claim the problem is too many models and stagnant styling is part of its problem. Now comes the Concept Z4, just unveiled at Pebble Beach. It's much more stylized than the current car, highlighted by massive vents in the lower fascia and side fender, as well as LED lights in the front and rear that are shoved to the outermost edges. While the dash layout is less cluttered than current vehicles, it still looks like it could come from a vehicle that's out right now. BMW is sure putting a lot of effort into a car that sells in extremely low volume. At the peak of its popularity, BMW sold less than 3,000 a year in the U.S. market. Last month, sales dropped 88%. They only sold 14 Z4s. Though diesel engines are under heavy attack in Europe, Honda just unveiled a new diesel for the Civic that's sold in the EU market. The 1.6 liter engine is the first to be tested using Europe's new testing procedures, what they call the Worldwide Harmonized Light Vehicle Test Procedure, or WLTP for short. The new test procedure does a better job of mimicking how cars are driven in the real world. Even though the test procedure is tougher than what was used before, the Honda diesel is rated at an impressive 63.5 miles per gallon and only emits 99 grams of CO2 per kilometer. Sergio Marchion, the CEO of FCA, says that the price of electric cars is going to soar. Speaking to auto analysts, he says he isn't worried about the capital investment needed for electric cars, what they call the CapEx. He's worried about the piece cost of the technology, the variable cost. Sergio says the investment that car companies are making on electrics is going to come under fire because no one is making money on them. Even though the cost of batteries is coming down, 
EVs still cost a lot more to make than conventional cars. If EVs truly become popular, he's predicting a huge increase in prices starting around 2021. And he adds, if prices of EVs go up, then sales will go down. Coming up next, a look at how General Motors is using data generated by cars to benefit the people who own them. Lear Connexus is the new application suite in vehicle connectivity designed to deliver over-the-air software updates and more from Lear Corporation's eSystems, leaders in power and data management. We've talked about how the data generated from autonomous and connected cars will be worth a fortune for automakers and tech companies. But will consumers see any benefit from this? On a recent AutoLine this week, we were joined by John McFarlane, the director of connected owner experiences at General Motors. And he talked about how the data collection can be beneficial to car owners. I think the key to monetization of data is that, it, it, again, it all comes back to the customer. And are we able to make the customer experience better? Are we able to make it better to own a GM vehicle as a result? And I think a good example of that is a program we have called Smart Driver. And so what Smart Driver does is it takes a, a, a really a customer pain point around owning a vehicle, which is car insurance and something that's expensive and that frankly there's a lot of a lot of um, you know misunderstanding about how it works and we all kind of pay fees to the middle of the curve and what smart driver does it enables customers to get real-time feedback excuse me feedback over how they drive based on real-time data conditions and so if you are um, hard braking if you're accelerating too quickly you can get feedback on that driving behavior and then if you choose to as a customer you can then have a report generated after 90 days that gives you a, a for lack of a better term a report card on how how good of a driver you are and if you're Joe and it comes back and it says you're a 95 percentile driver, you're exceptional, um, you can then share that with an insurance company and actually save money on your insurance. And so what you see there, I think, is a three-way value creation, which is really important when it comes to data collection. Customer benefit is they're saving money and they're hopefully becoming better and safer drivers. For GM, we're able to provide a better experience for our customers and then participate in the value stream with insurance companies. And insurance companies are getting qualified um, customers basically that are, are, have lower risk, risk profiles and can price accordingly. So I think that's an example of how the value chain has to work. You have to be able to take data, turn it into meaningful experiences for customers that makes owning or driving a vehicle better, and then, and only then, find ways to monetize. And for a more in-depth look into the monetization of data, you can watch that entire show right now on our website, autoline.tv, or on our YouTube channel. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.